Good morning, ladies. Let me start out with a joke. Now, what do you call a carnal Christian? Selfish. Okay, okay, you can blame it on my husband who forced me to share this corny joke because he created the slides. Now, many of you have attended CCF's True Life Retreat. Now, do you all recall the very first message, Our Father's Love? It is memorable because thousands have come to a personal relationship with Christ because they finally understood God's love. Not so with me. Because of my issues with my earthly father, I was one of those who somehow could not connect with a message that talked about our heavenly father's love. But something happened between that time and now. And so this message is about that. How I went from realization to acceptance, to deliverance, or to use Lee Strobel's IDC outline. It is to believe plus to receive is to become. The title of this message is True Love Series from Selfish Love to Selfless Love. And our main passage is from 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly, does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Now, let us start with the first point, believe. Now, what is it that we have to believe? We need to believe what God says about you. Now, are you all familiar with a U.S. TV series uh, titled The Brady Bunch and The Cosby Show? I was drawn to watching these series because all I've ever wanted was to be joyful. And these shows portrayed very stable, loving, encouraging families, homes full of happiness, laughter, and love. It's the kind that I wanted because the home I grew up in was the complete opposite. It was dysfunctional, unpredictable, and always filled with a lot of fights. Thus, I did not have a good relationship with my parents, most especially with my dad. And that's why it was very hard for me to comprehend God's love, as I couldn't connect God's love with the love that my earthly father modeled. I was in search of joy, and that was the reason it always had to be about me first. That was the baggage I brought into my marriage. Even though I had readily accepted Jesus when JP shared the gospel with me, it was just a shallow head knowledge. And because I didn't know how to receive God's love, I also didn't know how to give love in turn. You see, ladies, I was very selfish, impatient, and unkind. I was disrespectful, reactive, angry, and unforgiving. I eventually realized that what I had hated most from childhood was what I had become. In fact, my husband would often joke that I'm the doctor and he's the patient. Well, it may sound funny. It really is in reference to his patience while waiting for God to deal with the things that had to be worked out of my life. You see, if our main passage describes what love is, then what I was like when we first got married was the complete opposite. Let's first begin by understanding what love is not, which is what the world defines it to be. You see, selfish love is directed towards self. It is focused on getting what one can gain from someone else. Wikipedia defines selfishness as the quality or act of being concerned excessively or exclusively for oneself or one's own advantage, pleasure, or welfare, regardless of others. This kind of worldly love is putting my interests ahead to the exclusion of others. And that's why I think it's appropriate to call it self-firstness. Now let's look at this list. These are some telling signs of selfish love. It's your way or the highway. You don't listen to the other person's opinion. You don't take accountability. You always put your needs first. You need to be in control all the time. You're rarely happy for the good news received by others. And you don't try as much in your relationship. 
Do you identify with any of these signs of selfish love? In short, it is first and foremost about you. Now, isn't it any wonder that the preoccupation of taking photos of oneself is called selfies? Also, it is self-protecting, self-promoting, self-serving, self-seeking, self-absorbed, self-regarding, self-interested, self-indulgent, being self-obsessed. Now, ladies, how are we doing so far? Can you relate? No wonder the Bible reminds us that a time is coming when people will be lovers of self rather than lovers of God. And that's why another word for selfish love is ego, which stands for edging God out. In my case, how this edging God out manifested was by how I always blamed others. I didn't take any responsibility for any of my wrongdoing. I simply didn't care how my actions and words affected others. Basta ako yung tama, everybody else was mali. For example, I remember confronting my dad and shouting all the hurts that had been festering me since childhood. My intentions may have been good because they were fighting and I wanted to protect my mom, but instead I cut him deeply and I destroyed God's testimony. Because later I heard that he told my aunt he never wanted to be a Christian because of me. Now, how shameful and painful was that? And because of this, the joy I've always wanted always escaped me. That was such a low point in my life. It was as if God was putting a mirror to my face to show me how I really looked and what others had to say about me. But more than that, what God had to say about me. I realized that I was like salt that rubbed into a fresh wound with the awful words I said. But now I believe that God had to bring me to a painful self-confrontation in order for him to start me on the path to real transformation. So our first point is to believe. And our second point is to receive. What is it that we have to receive? We need to receive God's selfless love. Now, if you've been with CCF for some time, you know what selfless love is. It's a kind of love modeled by Jesus Christ, which is directed towards the goal of seeking someone else's highest good. It is indeed difficult, especially if that person is unlovable. And that's why in Luke 6, 32 to 33, it says, do you think you deserve credit for merely loving those who love you? Even the godless do that. And if you do good only to those who do you good, is that so wonderful? Even sinners do that much. And that is why love is a commitment directed towards imperfect people, unlovable people, which often requires overlooking their faults, not being easily angered by them, not keeping historical records of what they've done in the past, and always hoping for that time when that person will turn a corner. You see, real love is selfless. It believes that life is not primarily about you. It is about sacrificing everything for the benefit of the other person. And that is why Pastor Peter and Mother Diana always used to joke that love is long suffering. And what again is long suffering? Well, for you who are married, you know this to be true. You know that there is no greater testing than of selfless love than in the area of marriage. And not everyone knows this because everyone starts off bright-eyed and excited, thinking that after the wedding day is the happily ever after, promised by Hollywood. Then they get the shock of their life when they find out that marriage is totally different from the wedding day. Well, marriage is where the dying to self is done daily. And ladies, the reality is you die to self daily till death but do we part. So, let me encourage you, do not edge God out. Do not let ego get in the way. For without God, then the cord of three strands that holds a marriage together is undone. But you know what's really painful? It is to accept that I was that unlovable person. You see, I only got saved. I only got into this real personal relationship with Jesus Christ after the 10th year of my marriage when my husband actually bribed me to attend his Holy Spirit Bible study class that he was teaching. 
God used this class to speak to me. Now picture this, ladies. My husband is teaching at the front of the class, but I don't see him. I only hear God's voice, and this is what he told me. He said, Ruchi, your husband is not your enemy. And I'm like, no, Lord, I disagree. Kalaban kosha. JP is my enemy because he always goes against everything I believe or say. And God said, no, Ruchi. The enemy is the world, Satan, and your old self. And ladies, you know what happened was a miracle. The scales that were on my eyes fell off. And I finally got saved and my eyes were open. And I finally understood that our struggle is not against flesh and blood. I knew at that point that I was now a real follower of Jesus Christ, as I now desire to make things right with God and with others. I apologize to JP, to his parents, and all the people that the Lord allowed me to list down. And the list was long. He even showed me his, the character traits that I needed to change. And foremost on the list were selfishness and pride. Slowly, the Lord was changing me, but there was still something wrong. My husband knew that what continued to enslave me was unforgiveness and bitterness towards my parents. For how could I really love God, yet withhold forgiveness from others? The Bible tells us in 1 John 4.20, if anyone boasts, I love God, and goes on right on hating his brother or sister, thinking nothing of it, he is a liar. If he won't love the person he can see, how can he love God that he can't see? The command we have from Christ is blunt. Loving God includes loving people. You've got to love both. You've got to love God, and you've got to love people. The transformation took many more years. But it finally happened during the 70 by 7 Brace for Impact Conference by Dr. Bruce Wilkinson. As my husband tells it, it was when Dr. Bruce spoke about the need to forgive because we've been so greatly forgiven that he saw me sobbing. Hindi ko mapigil yung iyak ko. Iyak ng iyak ako. He knew right there and then that I had finally experienced a breakthrough. And JP was right. I was finally freed of all the baggage of festering bitterness from the past, and I could finally start living the abundant life that God had always wanted for me. I received God's rebuke and forgiveness and was now able to forgive. So our third point is to become. By receiving God's selfless love, we become God's instruments and are enabled to love selflessly. I became able to love my parents. You know, ladies, it was difficult at first to love my parents. So you know that saying in church where um, Pastor Peter encourages us, it's motion first, then the emotions follow, meaning you obey first, then the emotions will follow. So what did I do? I asked God, Lord, can you put your love in my heart for my parents? And so what did the Lord do? He did do that. What he did was he created a burden in my heart to pray for my parents' salvation. And not only that, the Lord also gave me empathy to help me to better understand my mother and father, to see them from God's point of view. So I came to appreciate that they too were products of their own dysfunctional families. So they could not give me what they didn't have. And because they didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus, they didn't know how to love each other and they didn't know how to love me. So while I used to dread them calling or even visiting from the US, JP and I now use these opportunities to share and show the love of Jesus. And for my dad who said he never wanted to be a Christian because of me, they now welcome us praying for them and with them at the end of every call. And they would even attend CCF worship services whenever they would visit. Praise God, right? So by receiving God's selfless love, not only was I able to love my parents, I became able to love my husband. I had unrealistic expectations of marriage, so I had also unrealistic expectations of JP. I wanted my husband to complete me and treat me like a princess. And when he could not and would not, I blamed him for my unhappiness. Not that he was without fault. 
he was just as flawed, that he also did not know what it took to be a husband. But that was three decades ago. And I have great news to tell you. Fast forward today. Do you know that by April 4, we will be celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary. Ladies, the old is gone and the new has become. And especially during this, this pandemic, it really brought out the best in us. Actually, it brought out the best in me. You know, because of so much death and sickness during this pandemic, I realized that life is so short. It made me appreciate people. It made me appreciate my family and especially my husband even more. And this has made our marriage even sweeter. The Ruchi who hated and wanted her husband dead so she can move on with her life now adores him and wants to make up for all the lost time to the point of smothering him with so many kisses and hugs. And even when we talk and discuss about the Lord and JP has to correct me and remind me, I no longer react as I used to. I now accept it as a blessing and encouragement that he loves me enough to correct me because he does it for my own good, because he wants me to become more and more Christ-like. So I no longer sweat the small stuff and I just enjoy his company. We laugh a lot and we spend a lot of time together. And I now finally realize that my husband has always wanted God's best for me. And because of that, I now know that JP is God's best for me. Ladies, let me ask you a few questions. Has this pandemic drawn you closer in your love relationship with Jesus? How about your love relationship with others, your loved ones? Or has it brought out the worst in you? Has it shown you how selfish you've been and how it has caused a lot of conflicts? Or has it drawn you closer to each other? Think about it. Well, by receiving God's selfless love, this is the bonus. I became able to love myself. My husband tells me that the reason he is so confident is because he knows the God who created the universe, who spoke all things into existence and who never makes a mistake, loves him and calls him by name. So that makes him exactly what God had intended him to be. I may not be there yet as my husband is, but slowly the old unlovable Ruchi is becoming more lovable and the person that God had always intended me to be. For one, you know, ladies being here doing uh, this talk, for those who know me, I'm an extreme introvert. And as an extreme introvert, I wouldn't normally do this. And the only reason why I'm even able to speak on these spiritual principles to you today is because God wants me to be selfless. For to share these confessions of how bad I was is not easy, but not to share them is even worse because it is selfish. There's this quote that I think truly captures what God desires for all of us to become. Loving God changes the way you love others. Again, loving God changes the way you love others. Because ladies, if you really love God, and God is the author of love. It is from that overflow of his love that you, he will change the way you love others. If you just ask him to put that love in your heart, you'll be able to love selflessly the way he wants you to. In closing, let us revisit our main passage. 1 Corinthians 13, 47 reads, Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant does not act unbecomingly, does not seek its own, it is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. So our main passage tells us what love is, but this passage shows us what love is. 1 John 4.10 reads, this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So Paul in his letter tells us what love is, but Jesus in his sacrifice shows us what love is. And as such, Jesus commands us this in turn. In John 15, 12 to 14, it reads, 
This is my commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. He does not intend for us to die for others literally, but he models for us how he desires for us to die to ourselves by serving others. In Mark 10, 45, it says, for even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So the formula for selfless love is to believe plus to receive is to become able to selflessly love as Jesus loved. Only by becoming is the kind of doing possible. So the definition of love is, for love is a commitment directed towards imperfect people to seek their eyes good, which often requires sacrifice. Now, remember how I was always in search of joy? Well, I have since learned a formula for it, and it's in the word joy. So what does joy stand for? It means you put Jesus first, others next, and yourself last. So from selfish love to selfless love is to become full of joy. Because ladies, if you put yourself first, then it's going to be yoj. Joy will always escape you. So ladies, let me encourage you. Put Jesus first, others next, and yourself last. And you'll be able to selflessly love and be filled with joy. Now let's close in prayer. Father God in heaven, I just thank you and praise you, Lord, Father, for the privilege of speaking today on selfish love to selfless love. Thank you, God, that you love me enough and love these ladies enough that you don't want us to stay the way we are, but you love us enough that you want us to become more and more Christ-like. So, Father God, I pray that this message will speak to the hearts of, women, of the women and that it will pierce their hearts, that they will look within themselves and listen to your Holy Spirit as you convict us how selfishly that we have been loving. I pray, Father God, that you would bless, Lord, their discussion and that you would also speak to us and that we would repent of our ways and that you would, Lord, place your love in our hearts, Father, so that we can selflessly love you. Lord, I pray, Father, for these women. May you bless them, Father. May you just bless their discussion and just bless, Father, the rest of the week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, ladies. This is the discussion questions. Which signs of selfish love is showing in your life? How will you move from selfish love to selfless love? What will you stop doing and what will you start doing? Thank you so much.